Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if we're gonna be putting loads of boost through Stevo, we're gonna to have to match that boost with loads of fuel. Now, the factory fuel pump can handle quite a lot of power, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be quite up to the job for what we've got planned for Stevo. So, I've bought a Walbro fuel pump fitting kit. Now, I've got that from Rossport, and the good thing about getting the kit is, it takes a lot of the messing around out of the work, really. Uh, you've got adapter brackets, you've got the connectors, you've got everything you're going to need to just replace the pump with the better one. Now, the Walbro pump can handle 400 litres per hour, so that should be good for like 700, 800 horsepower. Um, the factory one's good for about 400, so uh, yeah, a massive upgrade. And when we visited Simon Norton for the map, uh, we left without the full power. And if you remember, that was because he suspected the fuel pump was on its way out on Stevo. So um, really a good time to be replacing the pump. And uh, yeah, it's just another job to tick off the list. So let's have a look at what you get in the box and then we'll fit it to the car. Okay, so here we have everything that comes in the box. If you just buy the pump on its own, that's all you're gonna get. And I don't think this Walbro 400 pump will fit directly into the place that we want to fit it in the tank it's not going to fit it's going to rattle around you're going to have to solder you're going to have to do all sorts of messing around so pay the extra 40 pound and get the kit because it just makes the job that much easier now in the kit we get this adapter i'm not sure exactly where it goes but it's probably something like that to hold the pump in place we get this uh, fuel filter and a couple of little clips to hold it on we get this fuel feed line and we get an adapter which will adapt the connectors on this pump over to the Evo 10 wiring loom. Now at some point in the future, I'm probably gonna do a hard wire kit, but just for now, we're gonna get the pump in. So how would we even get to the fuel pump? Is it in the engine bay? Is it under the car? No, it's not too bad to get to. We'll uh, take a look down here. We go in the back door and under the rear seats is where the fuel pump is. So under that panel, that's where the pump is. We've got to take the assembly out, take it over to the bench, we'll swap out the actual pump unit itself, and then we'll come back to the tank and put it in here. All right, so this panel is not fixed down with anything. It's literally just a case of pulling it up, and there's just some sort of like adhesive underneath, which you can separate by hand. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I've already unplugged the fuel pump from when I disconnected the fuel lines, but we just got to remove this connector here and this. To do that, we're gonna to have to remove this little clip here with a set of mole grips. Just push it back, slide the hose off, and then there's a little sort of thing here, the green thing. You just stick your flathead screwdriver in like so. It pops up and then pull it off. So I'm gonna get a rag as well just to catch the fuel. I'm gonna take that one off. So the clip's off, and what we gotta do now I found this really helpful in the work I've been doing. It's just a pick. Um, you get it in under the hose. Careful not to like damage it. So you just get it in to sort of stretch it. Then a bit of WD-40, move the pick side to side a bit, just to get that WD-40 around the hose and then pull the hose off then. There we go, and it comes off without any trouble. Another thing I like to do, just to stop anything going, coming out of the hose, stick a screwdriver down, and just put the clamp back around the screwdriver. Give them a squirt with some penetrating fluid. Uh, they look like 8 mil, so we'll undo them, and then I'm pretty sure the whole unit then will just pop out. Now then, this should just pop straight out.
first things first, we're going to give it a good clean. We don't want any of this dirt getting anywhere that it shouldn't be, especially into the fuel. Now then, we come around the side of the pump and there's some sort of weird mechanism. Um, so yeah, on this side, there's nothing, but on the side with the spring, there's some little clip. So we just got to pop that out with a flat head, as you can see. And then we've got to remove the top section then. Okay, so we have to actually cut this. We've got to remove these clips. Ah. I was trying to figure out for ages, how do you actually get that out? Well, I think you can just pull it out, but we don't need this housing. So the kit actually deletes that. So we put that to one side and the way that would usually clamp down, uh, the filter would be at the bottom. Instead of using that, this little uh, metal thing goes on top of the pump. Then it goes into this bracket here and then it clicks down then and holds the pump sort of like that inside there. Um, now I've noticed quite a lot of debris in here, black bits of metal and stuff. So we're going to clean that out. Here's the fuel pump. I think we pretty much just Stick that on, like so. And it looks like this little washer just gets pushed over. So we've got it on and it does, it's not coming off. So I found the best way, get a little bend on the star and then push the inside of the star, the bit that's bent downwards, on. Then push the edges flat and it really has clamped onto that now and it's not coming off. So we'll put it into the, uh, the outer housing and we'll put it all back together. Okay, so we just fit the washer now. Then we're gonna put the bracket on, like so. And that's not moving at all. There's a little rubber uh, rubber O-ring we have to put on. So that stops here rotating. And uh, yeah, pretty impressed with the kit to be honest. Now, we've got to fit this connector, which is going to adapt the spades on this Walbro pump to the Evo pump housing thing. So this can go back in here. Then the new connector or adapter goes in there. Then we put the spades on. And the last thing to do is to replace the hose that we had to cut. So we're gonna stick it on over like that. I think if we heat that up a little bit, it'll go over, no problem. Then I'm gonna put a hose clamp on. So we're in lockdown now, but fortunately I have got a box um, of little hose clamps. And I'll do the same on the other side then. On. Now I did heat it up with a blowtorch, obviously that's not the smartest thing in the world to do when you're working on a wet fuel pump, but I had to heat it up away from the pump. Now I don't think that even needs a clamp, but I'm going to put one on anyway. Oh, 
that's not going anywhere. Okay, so we've upgraded the pump. So if the low fuel pressure problems were anything to do with that, we can be sure that they're going to be gone. Um, the lines are going to be clamped down really nice now with those hose clamps, whereas as a factory they're just sort of stuck on there. So yeah, that's going to stop any leakages. Remember to put the little clip back in there and uh, yeah, we'll stick it back in now as it was removed. Okay, so it's time to refit the pump. So it's the same as the removal, you just remove this panel out of the way. Now what I've decided to do, because my mapper seems to think I'm having low fuel pressure problems, I'm going to actually remove this clip and I'm going to replace it for a hose clip, the same type that we used on the actual fuel pump unit. And uh, what that will allow me to do is really clamp down on the fitting. Um, I don't even know if this was the problem or a problem. Maybe it was leaking. It feels quite a loose fit. So I've got the clips here. I might as well use them. It's just going to eliminate one possible reason for the low pressure. So not too tight, but that's a really tight bite on there. So that's good. Now I know this was definitely not leaking, but I'm still gonna replace it with a hose leak, a hose clamp. So as easy as that, we've replaced the fuel pump on Steve of the Evo. Now that pump, in theory, should hold about 700 horsepower or provide about 700 brake worth of fuel. Um, I'm probably not going to be pushing it that hard, probably five to 600, but uh, yeah, it's more than capable for what I need it for. Um, now, when I had my mapping session with Simon Norton, um, he had the feeling there was some low fuel pressure. So what I've done, we've upgraded that pump while I was in there, I've put hose clamps on all the fittings that I can see, as you saw throughout the video. Uh, one either end of that uh, replacement fuel line, so that's actually wider. Maybe it will increase flow, maybe it won't, I'm not sure. Um, but then also then the connections above the fuel tank, I've put proper hose clamps on. And also the internal connection to the hose. So I'm pretty sure that that pump is going to be more than powerful now for what I need it for. Now one other thing I'd like to do, um, the factory fuel electronic system can sometimes play up and what it does is it, vari it has variable voltage for different loads, tries to make the fuel pump last longer and uh, sometimes it'll run at 6 volts, 9, 12 um, and the, there's relays and all sorts of things going on which change the amount of power going to that pump. Now they're quite common that something will break in that circuit, maybe it will stay on low pressure, it might stay on high pressure and it can basically make your car run rich, make you run lean, cause all sorts of problems um, and it's basically just introducing a lot more failure points. So hopefully you're enjoying the videos, if you are be sure to click like down below, consider subscribing so you don't miss any more videos on Steve with the Evo and if you've got anything you'd like to see in a future video let me know down below in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Cheers guys.